What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, October 1st. 2019, the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the former informer, Imran Khan. I like the name. It, it rolls off the tongue well. It do, well, I had to really think about it because there's somebody pitched it last time, remember? Yeah. And then I couldn't remember what it was until right there <laughs> and it popped up and I was yeah. there. I haven't seen you in forever. How are you? I'm doing well. It, I'm actually doing great. It's, oh. October is great. It is. I'm, I woke up feeling energized this morning. I'm yeah. doing a, I'm feeling great today. Do you love Halloween? I, I have no particular feelings about Halloween. I don't that dislike one, Halloween. Yeah. I just never done much on it. You should do stuff with us. Okay. I think we're actually, I, we're, not, we're seeing Terminator, I believe, on Halloween night, and maybe throwing a Halloween party the day before or the day after. Kevin will have the details. Okay, I'm down for all of that. Okay, good. Okay. I cool. do like watching horror movies with friends all like yeah. all October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, have you ever seen Axum? No. Axum is the most fucking terrible ho- Halloween movie of all time. Okay. Or not Halloween, particularly, but like a horror, horror movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's. I highly encourage. I think it's You're on YouTube. You're on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think okay. it's on YouTube. Watch it with friends. It is literally the. The most B movie, B movie you can see. Where do you come down on the scary games, the Halloween games? Is that something you get into in October as well? I get into those whenever. Yeah. Like I will, I do them in October because, like, honestly, you you have a stream, you want to play scary games for you know the month of, of October because that's when people want to yeah, yeah give money for those things. But I will play a scary game whenever I feel like the need or the desire to play a scary game. This year, I feel like I'm being drawn to get into some Halloween games. And granted, I think it's easy with stuff like Medieval, Luigi's Mansion, right? There, uh, Ghostbusters. There's games out there that are the spoopy variety. But I re-downloaded Cosmic Quest 2. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to try to get through Cosmic Quest 2 this time. But then again, October, not a slow time for video games. Yeah. Not like I, I'm, just, I'm just sitting on my hands. I got plenty of stuff to play. Let me ask you this, re-scary games. Sure. Do you know or do you care if it's a Japanese scary game or an American scary game? Or Western, I should Ooh, say. I, mean, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, I don't know if I care. Usually, I'm more drawn to Western gameplay styles. Mm-hmm. But if we're talking like Fatal Frame and stuff, right, yeah. from J- Japan, yeah, those are awesome games. I think I dig like the Japanese ghost style more than I... I can't think of many Western horror games that really appeal to me. Um, but like just the Japanese horror, like the ghost that will come out of nowhere just in a frame and freak you out. That's the kind of thing I did. I see. I was yeah. going to, of course, recommend Murder Soul Suspect, which of I course, have played Murder Soul terrifying. Suspect. That game it's falls apart game. so hard in the last hour. <laughs> like it's the most, God. it's the funniest fucking thing. But hey, it's the best work Travis Willingham ever did. <laughs> I digress. Today we're talking about Sean Layden leaving PlayStation. We're talking about Gearbox and SAG responding to Troy Baker. And ladies and gentlemen, if that wasn't enough, PlayStation now is cutting its price in half. We'll cover it all because this is kind of funny games daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, you can give us your questions, comments, concerns, everything under the video game sun. Then tune in to watch this record it live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight. For everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe. The printer not working with me today. <laughs> it's being spoopy as well. <laughs> Housekeeping for you. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers. Oh, actually, I don't have them. Joey Shit. Noel, sick. And if you didn't know, Joey Noel, also the, moving. the cog that keeps the entire machine of kind of funny running. Yep. So I'm aware that a lot of people running on the subreddit today, where do I submit questions? There's no October link. We pulled them from September. Everything's going to be okay. However, there are October producers that I don't have anymore. Shit. I don't have those. So I'm going to say uh, just uh, Monday's ones, which were September's final ones. Uh, Patreon.com slash game, Blackjack and Mohammed Mohammed. Chances are Mohammed Mohammed and Blackjack are doing it again because they kind of <laughs> are awesome and take care of us all the time. You know, I want to know what else, uh, another housekeeping thing for you. Sure. Related what's that, to Patreon.com slash kind of funny or Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. At the platinum tier, uh, we have the Star Wars kind of funny shirt. I saw uh, those. If, those were great. If you support us at the platinum tier this month, you will get that shirt and it's dope so, <laughs> it is dope yeah it's, it says star wars and like the sirens are f- on our side the sirens yeah. are on our end yeah what we have to yeah. say all the time because <laughs> you hear the sirens go through which happen just as a si- like as it yeah, happens that, that's yeah. how it is around here sometimes it's like we plan the chaos that happens <laughs> uh today we're brought to you by third love and quit but i'll tell you about that later for now let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. I'm going to say 3.5 items on the Roper Report. A weird baker's dozen. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Uh, number one, 
It shocked us while we were recording the Kind of Funny podcast live yesterday. Sean Layden is leaving PlayStation. Uh, the news comes from a tweet and nowhere uh, else. Yeah. <laughs> tweeted yesterday at 9.30, that's September 30th, at 4.05 p.m., PlayStation tweeted, It is with great emotion that we announce that Worldwide Studios chairman Sean Layden will be departing SIE. His visionary leadership will be greatly missed. We wish him success in future endeavors and are deeply grateful for his years of service. Thanks for everything, Sean. And that was it. That's it. That was the Worldwide Studios chairman leaving PlayStation. He's been there since 1998, I believe, not in that role. He's been. Yeah, a, he's only been in the role for about four exactly. years. Exactly. Yeah. He, but he's been on his way up for quite some time. He's been doing a bunch of stuff with PlayStation. That's it. As of October 1st at 9.09 a.m., there's still no tweet from him. Mm -hmm. There is no official SIE press release. I tweeted about this yesterday. Sony loves nothing more than sending out press releases. Yeah. There's already a press release out about the PlayStation Now stuff we'll get to in a second. <laughs> nothing about the chairman of Worldwide Studios leaving the company. And it's not like he's not been on Twitter. I've been watching his likes. He's been liking stuff about this. He just hasn't said anything himself. Did you like my tweets? Did you see? He did not like your tweets. He liked a lot of like, uh, what was it? The girl got gay, like that uh, initiative. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's liking those tweets, and he's liking tweets that are like, oh, Sean's going to be missed, and stuff like that. But he's not, like, saying anything about it, which, when you get to the question, like, this is weird. You want, you want to bring the question right, right bring, away? Go ahead. Let's do Ignacio that. Rojas writes in to patreon.com slash games just like you can. It says, how's it shaking? Greg and Imran. With the weird handling of the news that Sean Lane will be leaving PlayStation, what does this say of the company? I think I'm not the only one who believes PlayStation has changed in the last few years compared to the first years of this generation. It's starting to feel like 2006 all over again. Should we be worried that the mistakes of the PS3 launch will repeat themselves with the PS5? Anyways, as always, keep being awesome. The reason I wanted to get to this because it mentions the weird handling. and it yeah, is, we're gonna talk, We'll answer the real question of it, but yeah. Yeah, it's so... I've been watching... All this stuff for years and years, long before Me I too, man. yeah, like this is completely abnormal for PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And like when they they put out that tweet, then Sony of Japan put out a separate release that I had, like IGN had some people who like you know speak Japanese. They looked at that, like other people have looked at it too and translated it, and it uses the word or the equivalent of the word retired, mm. and nothing else uses that. No yeah, other yeah, English, yeah, like yeah, yeah. so that word is key because if it. If he's retiring Worldwide Studios, that makes some sense. I don't think he's retiring at all. Yeah. Like, I, that's the thing about this is that it's so weird. I know I've had uh, conversations with people that are pointing to, like, how we've already seen this power struggle, right, with Jim Ryan yes. coming in and Codera going I've heard out. that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so when like, Codera left, it was super weird, too, because he'd only been at the role for about 12 months. Exactly, yeah, which is highly unlikely. Yeah, and then for, he, like, he didn't leave. He, even. like, exchanged roles with Jim Ryan. Like, so he took a demotion while Jim Ryan got promoted. And then, like, in the last couple of years, House has left, Trenton has left. Like, yeah. Trenton left to give Layden his job, essentially. But, yeah, yeah. But it's, it has been a very strange thing, especially on the cusp, like, literally months away from a new console being revealed. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. the head of Worldwide Studios goes, all right, I'm out. And that's, the, and that's what's weird about it and what I was talking about yesterday in my, my tweets about it, right? It's weird that it's just a tweet. There's no press release. There's mm -hmm. no official messaging from him. They don't at him in it. It's... This isn't how PlayStation does business, which to me makes it feel like Sean Layden yesterday was in a room with somebody, and I don't know what happened, but when he left that room, he's like, I'm out, I'm leaving, I'm done. Yeah. And I granted, maybe you're on the fence for a while, maybe that's been... I, I, I hypothesized on Twitter, right, like, maybe it was... I know in the old days, I'm not sure how it is anymore, but in the old days, like, I remember when somebody was like, I'm gonna go to GameSpot, and they worked at IGN, mm -hmm. IGN was like, cool, Thank you for your service. We don't need two weeks' notice. You have to leave now because it's a competitor. Right. So, like, yesterday in Twitter, I was like, maybe he's going to, like, a Google Stadia. Maybe he came in and gave us two weeks' notice, and they're like, get the fuck out now. No. Yeah. Stadia would be my best guess, honestly. Yeah. But, like, also, he's head of Worldwide Studios. You you kind of give that more respect than you would, you know, an engineer, like, down... Totally. Like, so, I... I don't know. Do you read it that like he, it was a yesterday decision that finally yeah, the straw broke the camel's back? They usually when they do this, they when they have a transition, they announce who's next. Yeah, like they have someone in line. For, they probably do have someone in line for this, but they haven't gotten him like suited up yet. Right. So yeah, I, there's usually a transition, right? There's yeah. usually a handoff of the baton, especially as you're saying, leading into the launch of the PlayStation Five. Because that's what that's how Sony PR works is they want to make sure people know that there's a peaceful like that it's being handed off. Transition of power. Yeah, easily. That yeah. It's, nothing is going wrong. But in this case, it's this feels panicky in a weird way. And I kind of want, like, I, I'm i guessing we've both heard that Jim Ryan and Sean Layden have had different ideas of where the PlayStation brand should go in, like, the last 
10 years, mm. starting with when Jim Ryan was at Sony Europe and he was shepherding the PS3. And Layton has been pretty open about how the fact that, like, yeah, we fucked up with the PS3 bad. Yeah. That was our moment of hubris. And Ryan has always looked at it like, you guys may have fucked up, but I made it work in Europe. Yeah. So I wonder if, like, Ryan, who is a very, like, services kind of guy, he's not big on, like, spending billions and billions of dollars on single player games when, they, like, they could be making that money on, like, games as a service as well. And Sean Lane has always been like, no, let's do the Gods of War. Let's do the God of War. Gods of War. <laughs> God of, the Spider-Man, like, yeah, the, yeah. those kind of games. So I don't think that's going to change in the next couple of years, but... Well, that's where it starts filtering in the Ignacio's question, right? Yeah. Of like, what PlayStation are we getting? And for me personally, yeah, that's been the sad realization, in fact, I guess, of this generation, where PlayStation 4, you know, started... You know, with a uh, they had a bloody nose and a bruised eye, right? And they were had to get up off the mat with PlayStation Four, which made them young and scrappy, which made them come out and be like, "All right, cool, it's February, we're announcing this thing. It's just a PC. It's a really nice yeah. PC. Get indie devs, please come work with us." And then it was the E three thing of here's how you exchange games, and also like you can, sh- you know, here's the price. Here's sh- there's no game sharing, gating, and everybody going crazy in the audience. It was when you're in second place, when you want to make that impact that's when you get crazy and you do really awesome things. And mm-hmm. that's what we're seeing right now at Xbox, right? Where I do think Phil Spencer and, you know, uh, the accessibility stuff, uh, Game Pass stuff, the Play Anywhere stuff, like they're in xCloud now. They're actually saying like, all right, cool, these are things that traditionally, if we were number one, we'd want to shy away from because we just want you to keep doing it, but we're number two by a wide margin. Yeah. Let's give you re- reasons to come to Xbox. And they cannot count this. St- like, they got... I don't want to say super lucky because it was also a very smart marketing and tactical decision with the beginning of the generation yeah. of like, you know, we're, we're exactly the same. We're not going to change. They got very fortunate that Microsoft sort of fell on their shoes. Sure. Well, I mean, it was that thing of, again, PlayStation was able to come out with the message we, I think, all wanted to hear, which was, yeah. we're a machine for gamers. This yeah. is the gamer's machine. I appeared on my PS4 after that E3 of like, totally. here's Kingdom Hearts 3, here's Final Fantasy 15. I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm in. Yeah. They can't really do that this time. Yeah. And, like, who knows what they're going to reveal this year or this E3 if they're even going. But, like, <laughs> if I don't think I could, I could easily pres- picture a situation where Layden is saying, we need to keep pushing hard on these things we've been doing because they've been working for us. Yeah. And Ryan is saying, no, that's not going to work this time because Microsoft is not going to trip on their laces. Mm. Like, mm. what is, are, do they even think of competition as a thing now? Or is it just game sales and service numbers and all that? Yeah. It's, they this generational transition is probably the biggest one for them, even though internally it seems like, oh well, we just had we proved consoles are back. We proved that these we can make these numbers still. Yeah. It's still a changing and evolving thing. So the way internal power struggles work is you think you look at this person who's disagreeing with you and stopping you from doing what you think is best, and suddenly you think wouldn't it be so much easier if they weren't here? <laughs> and like we could actually move on and get things done the way they need to be done. So I wouldn't be shocked if that were the case. Like, obviously, we don't know. Maybe he is just taking a role at Stadia. Maybe he wants to spend more time with his kids, but usually they say But that's the bullshit. Yeah, that's the thing. If it was that, if it was was a Reggie move, it would be a, here's the full-blown press release, here's a PlayStation's tweet, here's Sean's tweet, here's the the plan. The fact that it's just like, oh, God, 405, put something out. (laughs) You know, we have to be out in case we, once, you know, you quit, there's no one telling you anymore what you're going to tweet and what you can say. And so PlayStation wants to have the messaging out, right? That Sean Lee no longer works for us. Yeah. Like whatever he's about to do or say or whatever, this is, it's great. We'll see you later and make it look, you know, positive on their end, which I'm sure for the overwhelming majority it is, regardless of how whatever happened yesterday happened. But yeah, like it's not, uh, mm. I'm going to go, I want to go fishing more. I will say, as someone who has worked on the new side of this job, yeah. that if they actually had this planned, they would have told people beforehand. 100%. They would have like said that out an embargo, like even a couple of hours of saying, hey, this is going to happen at 4 o'clock. Be- watch your Twitter. We're going to announce Sean Lane is leaving. The fact that it's that abrupt, like again, untagged, even though he has a Twitter account, he was active on it. Yeah. Like it's just, and also Layton's always felt kind of uncomfortable in front of the camera. So I can understand from that perspective why he wouldn't do like the Reggie goodbye video. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. But I mean, just in general. Yeah. The, you know, boilerplate pa- quote. Yeah. It's been a great, you know, oh, by the way, we got, I got you wrong. Uh, thank you very much, Ill Girl Chill. Sean Layden started at PlayStation in 1987 as a communications assistant. Yeah, it's he, been a wonderful 30 plus years. He's been there forever. And yeah. it's like, it just feels, I'm not going to say he was pushed out, but it doesn't feel planned. Yeah. 
For sure. Yeah. But and that's what's gonna be so fascinating. Is now yeah. we have to wait. I, I you know, I tweeted last night about it and I was like, all right, now hope see what develops overnight. Nothing has developed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's been no statements, there's been no articles. It's like, fuck, what happened? I mean, I think they're just gonna want to move on from it and be like, well, okay, sure, yeah, 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 we're yeah. not gonna talk about this. This is Sean decided to go somewhere else. That's it. And like the I was looking at the tweet, wish him success in his future endeavors and are deeply grateful for his years of service. I kind of wonder if the Japanese phrasing is just like being polite of mm-hmm. like, we don't want to say he's going to a competitor. Yeah. So like, we're just going to say Well, it's like, retiring. and that was the, that was for me, like the more, when I first read it, right, and it seemed so abrupt, right? Again, it's 2019. My first thing was, oh my God, what did he fucking do? You know what I mean? Of like, yeah. what, but then you re, I re, read it and like, it, we weren't on a podcast anymore. It's like, okay, no, they're saying enough nice things in here that it's not. If if it was a me too thing, if it was he literally ran somebody over and it was about to, the shoe was about <laughs> yeah. to drop, it would totally be a Sean Layden no longer works for PlayStation. It would be very clinical, right? It would yes. be cut and dry. Here's what it is. There wouldn't be any room to navigate and us to have a conversation of it being nice, right? Like that said, like whoever or so. Whatever wheels he put in motion are going to stay in motion for at least the next two three years. Yeah. So whatever's going to happen with the PS Five in the first couple of years is going to be the same. After that is going to be a different question. Because, like, let's take a look at the Don Matrick, Phil Harrison transition. Yeah, yeah. Matrick clearly put a lot of wheels in motion that... Phil Spencer. Her- or Phil Spencer, sorry. No, it's fine. That, uh, it's very confusing. Yeah. Like, it, Harrison it, being at PlayStation and then leaving, now at Stadia. He's also <laughs> at the Sega and yeah. Sony. It's, yeah, it's very confusing. But the... When Harrison got it... Or, I'm sorry. When Spencer got in, yeah. he, uh, he clearly didn't like some of the Matrick initiatives. Like, obviously, Connect stuff, he was like, no, screw that, we're done with it. The TV, TV, TV. TV, Call, Call of Duty. A lot of his single-player games he wasn't happy with, the Platinum game. Like, the deals Magic made, like, uh, what was that game? Phantom Dust. Like, oh, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a game that I think Magic was super into, because it was like, okay, let's bring back some of the things that made Xbox unique. And Harrison's like, well, we don't need this. This is, like, an old game no one really cares yeah, no about. no one cares about this franchise. Yeah. So, like, he, he ended up, like, shaking house. And I imagine whoever takes Layden's place is going to go... Well, okay, obviously we keep the God of War and the Spider-Man and all that stuff, but do we need another medieval remake or what have you? Yeah. And I think those are the things that are going to start taking, like, those are the, the things at the periphery and the edges are going to start peeling off a little bit, and then we'll get into whatever Jim Ryan's Sony is going to look like. But it's so weird, right, because I feel like we've said it a lot recently and then kind of taken a step back with some of the choices, but PlayStation 3 PlayStation was so world of the weird. Mm-hmm. Let's make a bunch of weird shit. Let's put out all sorts of weird artsy fartsy games. It's cool if they don't sell. We're here to have fun. We're at Art House, right? Yeah. And then PlayStation 4 launched in the, a similar place of, hey, we're the machine for gamers. You know what I mean? I'll, you know, Geo Corsi being up there, Adam Boys being up there, yeah. the Vita. Boys Here's also all... a high profile departure. Exactly. Well, I mean, John Drake as well, right? Like, you don't have to go far. So Nick Sutton or like, <laughs> there's all these people that made the PlayStation brand what it is this generation that are no longer there, which then makes you wonder what the hell is the PlayStation brand next generation? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was that idea, even still, of like, all right, cool. You know, here's a bunch of weird indies we're supporting, and we want you to get behind Octodad and blah, blah, blah. As that slowly started to fade away and E3s before they stopped just became more and more, here's just the AAA exclusives. You get to that point now where it's like, okay, what is the, what is Sean Layden's PlayStation, right? What was it anymore? Is, is it what we've seen as they've started to move away? Is that what, is that, the, was it the remnants of the weird stuff, Jack Trenton's PlayStation, right? And then as we move into the Sean Layden thing, we're f- figuring it out. And like, okay, we're still going to make a medieval. We're still going to uh, support Pixel Opus to make something like Concrete Genie. Like, mm-hmm. that's a weird game. And then if, if we move towards this Jim Ryan mentality, is it just going to be that, all right, cool, we just have the worldwide studios making first-party titles. That's it. That's all we're doing. We're making big AAA games. The rest have to get away. I mean, possibly, like... We're not going to, it's one of those questions that we're not going to know until we th- see the results of it and can start yeah. piecing together like, oh, this must have been where this transition happened. And it's especially difficult because honestly, tr- uh, Layden had to sell a lot of Jack Ryan's terrible ideas of like l- Jim Ryan. Ryan. Jim Ryan. God, Jack Ryan's a so, <laughs> covert op. <laughs> there's so many <laughs> very Amazon, similar names that like apply to other names. Sure, I know. But the Ryan was very famously against crossplay. Oh, and, yeah, we yeah. had to protect the kids. Yeah, had to, Someone had to think of the children, Barrett. And then you had Layden out there, like, I think it was a Game Informer interview where Layden was saying things that were about crossplay that like, explicitly not true. And people were calling him on it. I don't think he wanted to, like, I don't think he wanted to be out there saying these things. I think there were strings above him and policies above him that he was beholden to. Of course. So I'm sure he was frustrated to that extent. But let me ask you this, because sure. Layden's big initiative in the last couple of years was uh, 
Sony picked or not Sony Pictures, uh, PlayStation. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about this. Fuck. He was like he's like co board director or whatever yeah. the hell of the title. He of wanted to be the, like the Kevin Feige of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sony. They still have a uh, universe. Uh, Kizilbash over there, though, right? Yeah, which yeah. I think Kizilbash is also a good option for taking over Layton's job. Mm. Him and Yoshi- Yoshida would be the first guesses on my mm. gun, but but I wonder if the kind of failure of Sony Pictures or whatever the PlayStation t- Pictures yeah, I'm trying to, on it. Uh, this is a Polygon 2019 May 20th. Yeah. Uh, Sony announces PlayStation Productions. PlayStation Sony Productions. Interactive's new PlayStation Productions. I wonder if the failure to get that off the ground was either frustrating him or frustrating the people above him. Oh, hey, they got Uncharted now, right? Isn't that part? It's under the umbrella now. They temporarily... They have... Un- they quote-unquote have Uncharted. <laughs> we'll see how long that PlayStation lasts. PlayStation Production is being led by... Uh, Assad Kizilbash, uh, an 11 year veteran of Sony's PlayStation marketing group, and overseen by Sean Layden, chairman of SIE Worldwide Studios. I wonder if maybe like people above him were caught like holding the strings on that too tightly, mm. or maybe mm. he was like having trouble with it and people above him weren't happy about it. Or maybe it's just not involved at all. Maybe it's a sim- like, again, this could be as simple as he just wanted to go. He got a job at Stadia, he got a job at Microsoft. Who knows? Like, he wants to go. Even if it is that, even if it is, he just went. He got another job, and it it is the best case scenario. Hey, here's my letter of resignation. I'll give you the two months or, or two weeks. And right. they're like, no, you got to go now. Okay, bye, guys. You know what I mean? I still think then it it would play differently to me. I just feel like if that was it, because it would be the tweet. He tweets. You know, there'd yeah. be a tweet of like, "Thank you for the thirty plus years at PlayStation. It's been. I can't wait to see you guys to see what I do next." Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he isn't, and everybody's like eating themselves trying to figure out what's going on i think is like the best case scenario for when you end badly when you have a bad right. breakup and you walk away and you're like you know what i'm not gonna throw you a life preserver i'm not gonna throw you this life vest I'm as not someone that happen. recently had a bad breakup that's yeah. the feeling of like watching twitter and just being like i'm just gonna see what people say and like their tweets yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't want it granted i'm a loud mouth so i got into it anyway <laughs> but like i can definitely see people who are more mature than me just going like i'm not gonna say anything i just like this happened this is like painful i just want to uh, embrace the positivity and just yeah, move yeah. on yeah but again until he shows up somewhere else like if we see sean Lennon at gdc just walking around in a stadia t-shirt and his nice like, scarf yeah he always has dope scarf he looking at like this really super nice blue and white one last time i was yeah. like i really want that yeah well now maybe you know playstation colors he'll sell it to you on the <laughs> uh well, the point five i put on this story is a different one the head of playstation japan slash asia has retired at 60 as well mm-hmm. uh at sushi morita uh retired got announced uh, retiring this one seems like a nor- more normal one in terms of like this is how it generally goes like here's an announcement it seems like everything's okay yeah. the chief financial officer of SIE is set to replace Marita <laughs> as corporate director oh look at yeah. that oh no successor uh, to the role of Japan uh, Asia president has been confirmed as of yet so, but also Sony Japan has been so de-emphasized and le- like totally technically Sony is run out of there but PlayStation is run out of America so I wanted to put it out there just a heads up I know people were definitely looking at that as like this guy really is falling I'm like that one feels planned that yeah. one feels like okay normal this 60 year old guy's retiring okay yeah. Sean Lane just a tweet from PlayStation and be like, we're gone. He's gone. Bye. Which is not Weird. always going to like a terrible, like, like I said, these wheels were in motion for a long time. And like, let's take Nintendo for an example. Like, obviously, Iwata had a very untimely passing, yes. but his, like, the Switch is kind of what he concepted out at one point. Like, he gave the green light for all those things, even though there are people who, like, did the actual designing and engineer work and put the big games on there. Yeah. Like, those wheels started when he was still president. So it's 2019 now, and we're finally starting to, not finally, but we're getting out of the Awada era these days. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're, it's going to take quite a while for us to, if you still like PS4 right now, you are still going to like them in four, two to three years. Yeah, After yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I do also wonder, like, what does this mean for, because from what I've heard, Layden was one of the people who didn't like the stage shows. Because he just didn't like he didn't, didn't like the idea of going on there on stage and being like, this is our, we're spending millions of dollars to, like, just introduce a thing that we could just roll on trailers. Interesting. So maybe state of play was his idea. I don't know if it was his idea specifically, but but he was for it. Yeah, he li- he liked the idea of not spending all your marketing money on being at a press conference. So maybe those come back. Maybe Sony goes big again. Hmm. We'll hmm. see. I think we'll see by February what their next what their heading is. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, Nanobiologist points out in kind of funny dot com slash you're wrong that some people who leave companies for others have NDAs in their contracts where they can't say anything after leaving for a couple of weeks. Could be the case here. Yeah. Good point. Hadn't brought up that wrinkle that yeah that could be it for sure. 
In that case, I would still question the lack of a press release. But Sean Layden, uh, this is a uh, you're wrong. We're getting updates on Sean Layden's <laughs> tweets now. Uh, that Sean Layden tweeted at Pix Lopez, the concrete genie people, a heart. So he is still on Twitter. <laughs> we knew he was still on our Twitter. Don't worry about that. It yeah. was just. We know nothing has happened to Sean Layden. It just <laughs> <laughs> his boat crashed overnight. <laughs> uh, more importantly, uh, I, I'd like to throw the one and only Shuhei Yoshida in the running for this job. Right? Yeah, get him out there. Come on. He was, makes he, it. He makes a lot of sense. President of Sony Worldwide Studios. Then they brought in this chairman over him. I didn't like it one bit. Yeah, that, I held my tongue for years, Imran, but I'm done holding it. I mean, that was Promote shoe. That was definitely a weird thing where they were essentially demoting him. Mm-hmm. But he does. He. Seems like he fits for Worldwide Studios' head right now. Yeah, 100%. That's why he was so so happy to be popping that champagne with Kojima. That, was <laughs> that, that, that felt like a weird picture to have like that day. Yeah. Well, that was like, the day before, but yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it all happens in the end. Maybe he was double smiles for that. Maybe or maybe they didn't tell him at all and like, you know, this is happening. Oh, well. Yeah, man, whatever. I'm going to yeah. hear Death Stranding's here and the baby talks <laughs> me through the controller. This is great. Uh, we have an update. <coughs> As number two on the Roper Report, uh, both SAG and Gearbox have put out statements about Troy Baker's statement that he was in in Borderlands 3 <laughs> because Gearbox didn't want to go Union. Make uh, it stop! This is Cecilia Akitako. I think after this, it's done. I think after this, there won't be anything <laughs> more to be say. Like five you right? say that now. I do say that now. Uh, the SAG after a statement reads like this. Uh, we applaud any member who stands up for workplace fairness and the integrity of their creative work. It is a courageous decision to act in the best interests of one's fellow SAG after uh, members, and this honors all working people. The misguided decision by Gearbox to deny their performers the opportunity to have fair union wages, a safe workplace, and the possibility of health care coverage for their families is unfortunate. We attempted to sign Gearbox to a union agreement. They refused and disengaged from those talks. We look forward to hearing from Gearbox perform I'm sorry, we look forward to hearing from any Gearbox performer who is interested in the many protections a union agreement offers actors. I guess I should have. I always assume you guys listen to every show. If you're dropping in today, it's because of Sean. Heads up, yeah. You remember how Troy Baker was Reese in Tales from the Borderlands? He was not Reese in Borderlands 3. There was a kerfuffle online where Randy Pitcher's like, Troy said no. Troy's like, I didn't say no. Randy's like, I heard that he said no. And Troy's like, you should check your fucking facts. And then there's a long silence. And then yesterday, there was a statement uh, in an interview with Troy in VG247 where Troy was basically like, they wouldn't go union, so I didn't do the job. Yeah. Then there was a long discussion on Kind of Funny Games Daily. Like, wait, Ashley's union? All these other people are union? Why are they working on the game and not Troy? To which we'll have a statement in a second. But that SAG's <laughs> statement on this. Here's Gearbox's response to Kotaku as well. Troy is an exceptional talent, and we were disappointed that he declined to partner on Borderlands 3 after being offered the part. We wish him the best and hope he knows uh, the offer to collaborate with him still stands. Gearbox is a Texas company and is bound by Texas law, which means that a person cannot be denied employment because of membership or non-membership in a labor union or other labor organization. As a talent-owned and talent-led organization, Gearbox enthusiastically works to ensure our pay and working conditions meet or exceed union standards. We also believe strongly in hiring local voice actors whenever we can, which is why we're thrilled Troy's com- uh, career really took off after working with us. End quote. Statement up. Gearbox High Fives thinks they nailed it. I saw... That feels so, petty as fuck. So many people... Yeah, it, it, no, to, for sure, right? It's like such a weird sign-off of, yeah, we believe strongly, and I, we are thrilled that Troy's career really took off after working with us. I saw so many people see that in tweet... What the fuck, dude? I think it was Mike Maharty from GameSpot who was like, yeah. saying Troy's career took off after Tales from the Borderlands is just like saying Michael J- Jordan was his best when he was playing for the Wizards. <laughs> and I get it because this is such an obtuse statement. It's worth pointing out, Troy actually does credit them with this because Troy worked with them on Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30 yeah. in 2005, which was a, a, one of the, the first time I ever interviewed Troy on Up at Noon and we really got to sit down and talk. Mm. Like He talked about what it was like filming some of these scenes here and you get what I think it was even the question was leading into like how it was like to be like last of us and stuff like that. And like he was doing stuff, emotional acting similar to last of us with brothers, uh, brothers in arms. And so that was a gearbox game. When, if you remember like the whole click of Troy and Travis and Laura, they all were Texas based. Mm-hmm. So they were Texas based. They did a whole bunch of different stuff there, including a whole bunch of Funimation stuff before they went out to LA and became the big time Hollywood celebrities. Yeah. Still, a weird sign-off yeah. to this statement. Accurate, but it feels like it's trying to take a stab at him. Like, you owe us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, we were we were on the Troy Baker train before. All right, Gearbox, you already don't look good. <laughs> like, just don't don't throw it in there. You don't need to throw it in there. It feels like the kind of statement you see from the White House of, like, just trying to be kind of like a petty throw. One the, final yeah. stab before they get out of yeah, it. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, you, d- you, you are not seeing a position of, like, good PR here. Yeah. 
But honestly, this like I saw you guys talk about it last night, so I don't want to go too much over those. No, things. you're fine. I do want to bring in Trevor Starkey, our friend, yeah. of course, a friend of the show, patreoncom slash kind of funny. I thought it was a bit too long in detail for you're wrong, but I wanted to provide my perspective, having worked in theaters with actors' equity contracts. On the whole, why Ashley worked out, or why Ashley worked out, but not Troy for Borderlands discussion. Uh, there's a lot here. I edited a lot of it down to these parts that I thought were very interesting. I would guess that Gearbox li- likely offered Ashley one of those special SAG AFRA guest contracts, as well as similar contracts to presu- uh, presumed union members Chris Hardwick, Ice T, and Penn and Teller. Uh, there were even probably they were even more probably more likely to do so for Ashley, viewing her and Ashley, or I'm sorry, Anthony Birch as part of the Gearbox family from their time working on Borderlands 2. The work of these performers on the project would then be with the blessing of SAG AFTRA, but it would also have made the union reps wary of how much union talent worked on the project, and they would want to move in the direction of the whole project being a union project. Better pay and benefits across actors involved, more potential union members, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When you combine this with Troy's comments, quote, they wouldn't go union and I can't do a non-union gig with the fact that they ultimately used uh, Ray Chase in the role, a SAG after a union member, probably best known as Noctis from Final Fantasy 15. My theory would be that it came down to the fact that the whole project wasn't a union gig. Even if Gearbox had been willing to offer Troy a special union contract, which they presumably did for Chase and everybody we just talked about. It's still all very hypothetical, uh, as only those involved with the negotiations know the truth, but I thought this might provide a bit more context slash analysis on the matter if you were all interested in continuing the conversation. That is interesting with that yeah. light, because our whole thing for a while, even yesterday, was like, wait, is Ashley Sag? Yes, she's Sag. Okay, great. I didn't realize that this Chase guy was Noctis and that he was the one who replaced Troy as Reese in the game. So you're using a bunch of Sag members in there, which there are different options, which then now goes back to what Trevor points out with this Troy quote, they wouldn't go union and I can't do a non-union gig. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Troy Baker, as we always say, right, like if you have a platform, use it. If Troy Baker is now to that point where he's like, line in the same like i'm only going to do something if it's union so that you benefit all my people which would then go even further with sag's quote that we had earlier yeah which also is a question of like why isn't the game union like can they they can afford it like yeah. oh yeah that game is sold what, like five, five million, million in five days yeah. so we're way beyond that now yeah, yeah, yeah like why can't they just do that like also I'm, I'm of two minds of this like on one hand it would have been great to have troy baker in that role on the other hand the role kind of sucks <laughs> like the lease in borderland 3 isn't good they, they boiled down a very complex character from Tales of the Borderlands and turned him into if a you mustache If joke. you didn't play Tales from the Borderlands, which, shame on you, yes. you should play Tales from Best the Borderlands. Best Telltale game, for sure. Uh, yeah, Reese is awesome in it. And obviously, he's the, you know, the character you play or whatever. You're making decisions, feeling him out, fleshing out. But yeah, like his, his whole storyline in this is like, do you like my mustache? Yeah. And I hate Malawan. Yeah. You're like, all right. And it's one of those, I wonder, you know, you talk about they have the money for it, right? I wonder if... They obviously want to honor their legacy. They want to put people like Ashley in the game. But even Ashley's used very little, right? And that's she one. has, like, one scene and a couple of radio stuff. That's it. Yeah, yeah. There's some side missions, too. But it's that thing of, like, did they use? Did they write them so little because they're like, well, we hope we get the big names and we don't want to pay them. Yeah. We don't want to pay them, like, for a week of work. We'd rather it be one afternoon of work. On the other hand, Chris Hardwick, which is a voice they probably should have replaced, yep. was, like, he has so many lines in that game. Yeah, like, yeah he, like the whole first, like, couple hours early. And then I, I went back to Pandora last night, and he's still, like, getting <laughs> missions. Yeah. It was like, oh, God, another Vaughn mission. Great. Which they boiled him down to basically just abs and... Bandits. Again, yeah. yeah. If you don't, it, it's a weird... And I guess that's... It's a weird thing of, like, man, these characters were so interesting and had so much char- uh, development in Tales from the Borderlands. But in the Borderlands... And this, I guess it goes back to when they announced Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah. And I was like, I've never... Why would I want uh, Telltale's a story game? The like, Borderlands games aren't story, right? Mm-hmm. And then you're playing it, you're like, oh man, this is a great story. But then when I'm back in the Borderlands game and I just want to run around and shoot shit, yeah, I do I actually I, want to sit there and listen? And you know, I think I was talking on Twitter like, a couple of weeks ago, like Trails in the Borderlands makes Borderlands Three a little worse because yeah. it shows you can do very cool, interesting things with the characters in that world. Yeah, it's just they didn't. Now here's my question for you because obviously I'm right there with you. Tales mm-hmm. from the Borderlands, obviously this pinnacle. Do you want that from Borderlands 3? I think if they put it... Like, so there's there's already so much writing and dialogue in that game. Yeah. It would not have hurt for it to be good. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, okay so you, have you done the kill lock quest? Yep. Like, you, like, that was a, the guy on Meridian that, like, like was former Mad Moxie boyfriend. Oh, or, yeah, 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 yeah. Where I have to, the, the where game I, show. I, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm doing it for Mad Moxie to get there yeah. to have sex with him to then kill him. Yeah, he just does not shut up that entire quest. Right. And it's all just really fucking terrible sex jokes yeah, the yeah, entire yeah. time. 
you could have done that quest well. <laughs> like you could have written that quest well, and it would have been a better quest. But like I had a friend that did it before, and it, like that friend is she's in our group as well. Yeah, and she was saying like, okay, this quest sucks so much because this guy just does not stop talking. Sure. And I'm like, okay, it can't be that bad. But no, he just does not shut up the entire time. Yeah. So if you're going to have that much writing in the game, it would have been great if you had writers that could back that up. Mm, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but then, but here's my thing. Aren't you going to talk over it? Like, and like, don't get me wrong. This isn't an out. I'm not giving yeah. it an out at all. But it's that idea of like, hey, he's got to be annoying. So he's gonna have him because we want you. We want to point out that he's a dirtbag. We want you to kill him. Do all these different things. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't again. With Borderlands 3, I'm usually playing it with people, and it's me and Goldfarb talking about what he did over the weekend and right. what we're working on this trophy. So I'm ignoring that stuff anyway, right? Like, I feel like if it's not a cut scene, it's, which aren't also mm -hmm. great, don't get me wrong, do we care that it's like... I think we talk over it because written? we can ignore it. Okay, fair. Like, if it That's were fair. good, then, like, everyone would be... I, I've played... I've been playing Remnant from the Ashes recently, yeah. like, with some friends. When there's story stuff, we tend to just, like, shut up and, like, listen to the gotcha. story. Like, not that it's, like, amazing writing, but it's, you know... I'm interested in that story in that world. When it's Borderlands, I'm like, I wonder if I should turn the dialogue, the voice down to zero. Because mm, like mm. some of the, I I like Tiny Tina in Borderlands too. I don't don't like her at all in Borderlands Three. Yeah. I don't know exactly what they changed to make her annoying, but they made her annoying somehow. You know, on our pizza talk of uh, making the pizza bombs. Oh, I think stuff. it was like she she was using Yas Queen. But, like, using it incorrectly, and I'm like, how do you use that incorrectly? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was bad. Yeah, it's it's one of those things, like, I love, I I enjoy Borderlands 3 a lot. It's probably going to find its place in my top 10 this year. Yeah. But if, when I think, whenever Reese is talking, I'm like, I remember that scene from Border Tales of the Borderlands when he took the chip out. And it is the, one of the best scenes, period, in a Telltale game. Yeah. I cannot, like, imagine how that Reese connects to this Reese. And that's, to and, uh, and that's the thing, is, like, I... To get to the Reese part of it, yes. Yeah. Regardless, uh, like as soon as he opens his mouth, it's like, oh man, it's not Troy. And I'm not that kind of guy, mm -hmm. right? But you're not Reese. I know Reese so well. I love Reese. You're not Reese right now. And then let alone when all it is is this, I got a mustache. Yeah. Do you like the mustache? Funny choice at the end of, you know, what do you do with the mustache? But uh, outside of that, it's just like, okay, cool. You're not, you pale in comparison to what's come before. Mm -hmm. I agree 100% with that. It's like the inverse of the infamous thing we were talking about a couple of weeks ago right. of like when, when they, they tried, tried to change, change the character design. <laughs> yeah. But like the writing and the character of the Cole would have been still the same, which sure. would have had some dissonance to it. They kind of do the, the opposite thing with uh, Reese of like, okay, well, the writing's different, but the character is still the same. So they want me to say, no, think this is Reese, but in my head, this is not the same character that I went through those 12 hours of the story. And with. that's a great point too, especially using the infamous example, right? Because they did change voice actors, infamous one to two. Yeah. But in two, Eric Layden came in and he owned it. And he did feel like Cole, right? And he yeah. paid homage to that and it was a c direct connection to everything we'd gone through. Excuse me, in infamous one, right? Yeah. So like, if Troy Baker not voicing it is not a, it doesn't, if it were a very well, if it were Reese, if it yeah, were yeah. actually Reese, written by those writers or written just as well, I would have been like, "This is a shame. This is an absolute tragedy that he did not get in." Yeah, yeah, yeah. but with him not being like just being a character we run by and get missions from. Yeah, yeah it's like, all right, well, that's fine. Sure. Yeah, I don't care that much. Uh, for me, the mo I don't know if you've gotten to it. It's a side mission I, I did way late in game in Borderlands Three. The only time where I've literally had to mute the mute it mm. was uh, you do you basically test an AR game. It's not like I know there's the VR one early the on. The VR one is also bad, but yeah, it's well, it's just that filter where I was just like, oh, I'm gonna, my eyes are gonna fall out of my face. I feel like it got worse as the mission went on. Well, it goes on too long. So yeah, your eyes are like, my <laughs> eyes are gonna explode. Uh, the AR one where they're like, they're totally. It's like traditionally what uh, Borderlands I think will mess up with their jokes, mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, you're making fun of microtransactions and how games are launched broken already. Ha ha! And then it keeps going and keeps shoving <laughs> that joke down. And there's this woman who's in T pose dancing behind you or like you know you're following her and it's an escort mission to make fun of how bad escort missions are mm -hmm. and it's like on surface level and all how, how bad her like stand in dialogue is surface level you're like oh man that's funny yeah. when it keeps fucking going and it's so goddamn annoying and i'm like i had to mute it because jen was like please shut this up and i'm like <laughs> i know i was gonna power through but we have to mute it it's fine i was talking when i was playing with some friends last night we were like there was a way to make those youtube villains work and I think what they should have done is they should have done like, you know, those title cards with like, they said the yeah. name and a joke. They should have been like the YouTube thumbnails of like, can't believe Pandora doesn't have a vault key and just like arrows pointing to nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah, them yeah. going like that. The circles. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They should have done that. But that parts of that game feel like they're a couple of years too late for a lot of those things. Sure. So. Uh, number three on the rope report. 
PlayStation Now has cut its price in half. PlayStation Now subscriptions will now start at $9.99 monthly while adding marquee limited-time titles such as Grand Theft Auto V and God of War to more than 800 games available on the service. Starting today, PlayStation Now, which is on PlayStation 4 systems and PC, will be offered at the following prices, keeping in line with pricing of other entertainment streaming services. Customers will see the price change in their next billing cycle. Uh, U.S. is now $10 a month, as we said earlier, $25 quarterly, or $60 yearly. Uh, PlayStation Now will also expand the industry's largest... Uh, also expand on the industry's largest games library for a console subscription service with additional blockbuster content available for a limited window. These games can be streamed on a PlayStation 4 system or PC or downloaded to a PS4 system. The new content is among the most played and highly acclaimed games on the PlayStation 4 platform and will be added on a monthly basis. Launching today are God of War, Grand Theft Auto V, Infamous Second Son, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Imran, Mm -hmm. we're down $10, cut in half on PlayStation Now. Does this change everything? This is the pl- price it should have launched at. Yeah, <laughs> but I think they're ca- they're kind of feeling the heat of Game Pass a little bit. Yeah. Like, also this, I does it does feel like this is a Jim Ryan initiative of we need to get into streaming. So you want to set that ground for whatever PS Five is going to do, because you want that you want people to give you more money every month, and sometimes the best way to do that is to cut the price of what they have to pay, especially in an area era where like you're also making big moves on PlayStation View. Because they now they made that Disney deal a couple of days ago. Yeah, and they're also like people have to pay so many subscription fees now that it doesn't make sense to have a twenty dollar a month thing just to stream games. So they're realizing that. I don't think this is going to break any sort of like walls open for that service. Mm, it's mm. going to get a couple of. I would say this probably maybe doubles to a third, like a, th- a third to doubles the number of people who are playing it. But that's not a huge number to begin with. Uh, what it does is, like I said, it lays a foundation for PS5 of this is what we're going to do. This is the kind of thing service you'd expect from us. Like maybe you pay a higher PS Plus price to get this rolled in, like Game Pass Ultimate does. Yeah, that seems like a logical step for them. But I don't think this is like this on its own is not going to change the game. Yeah, you figure what if you don't have a PlayStation 4, I guess now you can use PlayStation Now at least for a limited time to get in and get uh, God of War on your PC, Grand Theft Auto on your PC, Infamous uh, Uncharted, God, Grand Theft Auto is a bad example. Mm-hmm. But the other, you know what I mean, those three Sony first party games if you're just an Xbox PC person, jump in and use them, yeah, but is that enough to actually move the needle? Is it just future proofing? Ryan T from Tennessee writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, "Hey KOGDD Oh, hey, hey, KFGD, just one D. Uh, with the new price drop for PlayStation Now and the addition of some of the first party games, God of War and Uncharted 4 to PlayStation Now, and the announcement that October's PlayStation Plus includes MLB The Show and The Last of Us, do you think this is closer to Sony testing the waters for a more Game Pass like approach to first parties on Plus and Now? Or do you think that this was a way to get more value into these services without having to make deals with third parties? I think. They see how why Game Pass is, is successful, mm-hmm. and I think they're kind of scared not not scared of what Microsoft is going to do, but scared of the way that changes the market. Because like Gears Five is a very good example of we don't understand how that's benefiting Microsoft because they have the internal numbers on it, so we don't know what their budget is and what like what line crosses the other line. So Gears Five not selling great but doing fantastic numbers on Game Pass, which is like $2 for two months. Yeah. So everyone jumped in to play Gears of War for $2, and like maybe they stay in for another couple of months. They play maybe the they multiplayer, don't. they do the microtransactions we talked about yesterday. Yeah, so for Microsoft, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. I think Sony is looking at something like The Last of Us and being like, if the market moves to the point where they expect people to have The Last of Us just for download day one for subscription cost. Yeah. Is that good for them? Will they make back the money on a multi-million dollar prof- or, uh, portfolio builder like that game? I don't... I, th- I can't say. The market is changing in very weird ways. And depends Rapidly. On, yeah. <laughs> and it really depends on how they're scoping their budgets for that sort of thing. But I don't think... I think they, they're testing the waters of... Will this do better with first party games on there? And if the answer is yes, they might start putting new first party games on there. Like honestly, if you own a PS4 and you haven't bought Second Sun yet, you were not super interested in that game, so you may be interested if you also have a subscription. Yeah. But if you start putting new games on the service as well, people will start subscribing for those new games. And that changes the 
the math completely. I don't think they go day and date with PlayStation exclusive, you know, the first party games. And I'm talking about the AAA first party games. Yeah. I don't think they do that until next generation when they fall behind. Mm-hmm. I think that's a way of like trying to fire everything you got to catch up to Xbox if that's what you need to do. Because Xbox doing it right, granted, they haven't had the first party lineup. They haven't had the AAA lineup, right? G- Game Pass uh, in particular with Gears of War really being the first, hey, this is the first mega AAA everybody's excited for. And I don't mean to offend you Forza fans, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> no, the one yeah, that like, br- gets outside of a genre, I think. That was less of a risk for them. And they'd rather get you in to be like, cool, you've heard about Sea of Thieves. You've heard about State of Decay 2. You've heard about Forza. Here's a cheap way to get in and try it. And then hopefully you find the library of games, find stuff you've missed. You want to play it and keep it around for that. And I think that was a good way to get people turning their Xbox on and keeping them coming back to their Xbox for that value. Mm -hmm. But if PlayStation first party games are going to continue to come out and just fucking dominate in sales like Spider-Man did, right? Or, Or like God of War did or like Uncharted 4 did. I mean, how many units do you think Last of Us Part Two is going to ship, right? Like, right, It'll I be a 50 million through. seller, at least. Right? I mean, like, yeah. there's no... Even though it's cool if that you could get, what, 5% of that 50 million to pay you 10 bucks a month and stick around, mm. that, I mean, theoretically and statistically probably would happen, but why gamble it when you, could, you know you can make that money out of brick and mortar or digital sales? Firm? It definitely also changes the calculus of how you release those games, because, like, Last of Us 2 won't have multiplayer at launch. Yeah. It would need to have multiplayer at launch if you wanted to have that kind of release. Because yeah. like you want to keep people playing repeatedly and you want to have them feed into an ecosystem with like small microtransactions sure. and things like that. Well, I mean, I downloaded Remastered last or two nights ago, right, to get ready because eventually I'm going to have time, wink, wink, before <laughs> Last of Us 2 to play it. And it was that same thing of like, it's like 25 plus pieces of DLC. I'm like, what the fuck? And I cl- I'm like, oh, right. The multiplayer, all the yeah. cosmetics they made for that game. Like, all right, there they are. Like, there you go. It's something you don't think about with Naughty Dog. Yeah. Like how much that and the hats they put out for Uncharted multiplayer and shit like that. I will say, like, get so I'm going to wrap Nintendo into this a little bit because, like, the way Nintendo does their online offerings of, like, here's a free Kirby game, here's a free Tetris game, Mm -hmm. like, those are interesting. And I think that is a a method Sony could go down as well. But I think they're more eyeing Game Pass and this sort of thing. And, like, uh, Ready Set Heroes comes out tomorrow. Today. Today. It's today. Nobody knows. And nobody really cares. Yeah. And, like, that would be the kind of game that would be ideal to be like, 100%. Here, I know you're not going to buy this game, but here's hey kids, free. Do you want a competitive 2v2 dungeon crawler? Yeah. No, what the fuck is that? You know how many games are out right now? And Oh, are, are we using established PlayStation characters? No, it's <laughs> random woodland creatures. No, no, yeah. no, I don't have time or need that. But if, to your point, if it's on the service, if like, it was free and it's, hey, there's this game out that you're already paying for, why not give it a shot? Maybe you get a player base. I it. spend a decent amount of time just going through Game Pass and be like, oh, I've never played this game. Blazing Chrome is a great example of like, yeah. I'm not going to pay for this game. Like, yeah. I, d- I want to play it, but I don't have anyone to play with. So there's calculus in my mind of like, oh, I'm not getting the full value, but it's on Game Pass. I'll just pl- download it and play it. Like, yeah. it's worth it. It's a great game. Yeah. They should start doing things like that. If, and that's my thing is like, they should if they want that. Yeah. Like, Ready Set Heroes is such a great example of looking around and be like, what year is it? Because this is a PlayStation 3 move. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's this weird game we made. Do you want to play it? And you're like, <laughs> I don't, uh, n- I know, like, but it's cool you guys are making weird shit. Like, like I like to play it. I don't want to pay for it. I played it at the preview event. Yeah. yeah, and it was fine. Cool. But it's like, if you don't have a library of those, a, a, a lineup of those, a chamber in your gun full of those, like, why would you? And also then, I, I still don't believe that PlayStation knows what they want to do with PlayStation now. Yeah. And if they want to actually go toe-to-toe with Xbox and compete with Game Pass. Like, again, like if you soft launch it with games like Concrete Genie and things like that, that makes way more sense than like this weird thing they're doing of, like I guess, not the most recent Uncharted game or infinite, like a near-launch title yeah. that we have, like... Is it even Infamous Second Son plus the DLC or just... Like just second song, I, yeah. okay, no, no first lie. They would have they would have made a big deal about that or yeah. said deluxe edition. By the way, I want to say like I've been looking at you talking this conversation this entire time. Every time I turn to the side to take a drink of water, I see you on the screen yeah. in that outfit. And I'm like I'm immediately caught off guard. Oh, sorry. If you're an audio listener, I'm wearing a sick Halloween suit. It, yeah, it's, it's fucking dope. sick. Is the word I would use. To- I, I'm toying around is with. It- is it the word you would use? I want not, y'all not to sound off every <laughs> sound off in the comments. I have thought about, similar to how I wore the Santa hat every day in December last year, wear the Halloween suit every day in October. So sound Gross. off if you'd like that. What? You got to wash it, man. No, it's from uh, it's from Spirit Halloween. It's fine. <laughs> it's you, very, it breathes you don't a have lot. to wash anything from Spirit Halloween. Exactly. It, it breathes a lot. And let me right. tell you, these elastic pants, I should get more elastic pants. Are you sure? Which part? Uh, all of it. <laughs> you know what I am sure about? 
There's a lot of games coming up, but they're not here right now. If I wanted to know what did come to the mom and gop shop day, where would have it? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the kind of funny games daily show host each and every weekday. <laughs> yeah. Before I get to out today, let me tell you about our sponsors. I'll begin with Quip. Did you know that nearly everyone at Kind of Funny uses a Quip toothbrush? As you've probably heard one of our showers before, I bet you did. Uh, but what actually makes a better toothbrush? Induct- industrial strength power? Claims of miraculous trendy ingre- ingredients? Multiple modes? If you ask your dentist, they'll tell you it's less about the brush and more about how you use it. That's why Quip was created by dentists and product designers to focus on what actually matters for your oral health. Healthier habits. Quips, sensitive vibrations with a built-in timer guide gentle brushing for the dentist recommended two minutes with 30-second pulses ensuring an even clean. Quip automatically delivers brush heads to your door every three months for clean new bristles right on schedule. The sleek, intuitive design is simple to use and comes with a travel cap that doubles as a mere mount. These thoughtful features make brushing something you actually want to do twice a day. Good habits matter to live a healthier life, so help form fresh oral habits with Quip. Quip starts at just $25, and you can get your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash games. This is a simple way to support our show and start brushing better, but you have to go to getquip.com slash games uh, for your first refill pack for free. Right now, to getquip.com slash games, games, games. Next up, it's Third Love. Almost all of the kind of honeys are wearing Third Love bras, and with their tagless options, half cup sizes, and amazing customer service, it's easy to see why. Third Love uses data points generated by millions of women who have taken their Fit Finder quiz to design bras with breast size and shape in mind for a perfect fit and premium feel. Third Love offers more than 80 sizes, including their signature half cup sizes. You can skip the trip, find your fit with Third Love's online Fit Finder, order and try it at home. No more awkward fitting room experiences. Every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. And if you don't love it, return it, and Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. Third Love's team of expert fit stylists are dedicated to helping you find your perfect fit. They're available every day via text, chat, and phone. Uh, Returns and exchanges are free and easy as well. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash games now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash games for 15% off today. Uh, Out today, Imran. Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation 2 is on PlayStation 4. I assume Andy is calling in sick to play it. <laughs> Destiny 2 Shadow Keep is launched on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Are you going to play this one? Maybe. I downloaded it last night. Like, do I want to do this again? Because, like, Borderlands, I've had so much fun shooting things with my friends. I'm like, mm-hmm. is it time to go back here? Is it time to go back to Destiny? Because it's been, a, like, what, two years? Yeah. That's yeah, a long time. I think I played, what was that big one they did last year? I don't know. Yeah, I played a little bit of that, and I'm like, all right, I think I've had my Destiny fill. Yeah. Uh, maybe, like, I think that's the way I play Destiny. It's like, I'll just go in for the, every new expansion and, like, big s- expansion. Sure. Play a little bit, and then I'm done. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, you know a girl who chants love at the bound of this world is on <laughs> PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC. Ready Set Heroes is on PlayStation 4. 80 Days is on Switch. Sniper Elite 3 Ultimate Edition is on Switch. Lantarium is on Switch. Super Crate Box is on Switch. Hunting on Myths is on PC. Particle Wars is on P- PC. What the Golf is on the Epic Game Store today. Uh, Neverwinter Uprising is on Xbox One and PS4. Call of Duty Mobile is now available in all countries and regions where Google Pl- Play and App Store are supported, with the exception of mainland China, Vietnam, and Belgium. <laughs> Sorry to all those people listening to us from there. Uh, what, you want to see the trailer for this? For you now? This is You Know, a girl who chants love at the bounds of this world. Barrett's going to show you the trailer. PUBG Corporation has released its latest update to live console servers. Right, I'm already feeling uncomfortable about this. Yeah, story. this is... Update for what? Because that woman is like an astro... She was naked in astral? Yeah. A girl who chants love... Oh, that's just still the title. I like how you're like, I feel uncomfortable. You're going to let it play. It's not <laughs> PlayStation. A strange gift left by your father sparks an adventure. If this isn't on Vita, man, you're missing out on visual novel fans <laughs> everywhere. You want to know what his research focused on? Travel through time to solve. Oh. Whoa! Okay, alrighty. So this is We're this is definitely a Vita game, whether or not it's on Vita. You, know, you can click off, but let it keep playing. I want to see how this develops. All right. <laughs> what is the secret of the sword cape? What? Not the sword cape, just sword I'm cape sorry, proper I noun. You know so maybe mean? it's a cape, or maybe like it's a cape. What is? This is what Kauri Kauri is after. Seek out the right path to reach the truth. What a jam already, though. Who yeah. is she? Man. This is a very, like, Sega Saturn vibe to me. 
<laughs> it just screams Vita to me. Yeah. With some weird, creepy ass touch controls. Uh, anyways, PUBG has a new th- update out. 4.3 introduces cross platform play to Xbox One and PlayStation 4 users. Uh, players from both consoles are now able to join the same matchmaking pool and face off on the battleground for the first time ever. The Sink- Sinking City team has put out a console patch uh, that was they said was heavily delayed for multiple reasons. To try to make up for the delay, they've added additional enhancements to the game, plus free DLC outfits. Uh, the same enhancements and DLC will come to PC very soon. And then Borderlands announced its 10th anniversary celebration in uh, 10 years ago. Borderlands 1 came out. Uh, starting today, for the, and through the next five weeks, uh, there's going to be all sorts of events happening in Borderlands 3. Right now, they've launched Boss Week. Uh, this is basically until October 8th. Uh, you can go play, and bosses have uh, increased chance of dropping a unique legendary item. Week 2 is going to be a rare spawn hunt. Week 3 is going to be Show Me the Iridium. Week 4 is going to be Mayhem on Twitch. And Week 5 is going to be Spooky Surprise. Ooh. Do you want a spooky surprise. Yes, I, I do. want better gun. So I'm hoping for that legendary. Where do you get those yeah. legendaries? Yeah, get on there. Get I want something that breaks the game because that's more fun for me. Huh. What? Where you can just like one hit kill everything? Yeah. Okay. I want guns that are just like this is unfairly powerful and that's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, new dates for you. Chasm's gonna get a massive update on Switch, PS4, and Xbox One Thursday, uh, October third. Uh, they dropped a new trailer for Mortal Kombat 11 showing the Terminator T800. That's gonna be available October eighth. He's not voiced by Arnold. No, very distracting. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know? Like, if you can't get Arnold, then, like, cancel the character. Why do it? Yeah. Why just have the robot Terminator? Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't have it be the Schwarzenegger, but you want to start... If Bruce Campbell isn't voicing Ash, then, like, cancel that character, too. Exactly. Yeah. Just bring some other Mortal Kombat 4 character in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Battlefield Five is also getting Operation Underground multiplayer map on October 3rd. Uh, Imran, we we sprinkled in the reader mail there. Let me mm. see. I know I put two general, more general ones in here. Let's go. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll do this one, all right? We're going to start with Riot Goes Wolf. Riot Goes Wolf writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can. It says, hello to Greg and Imran. Apex Legends Season 3 drops today. About this time a month ago, I had lost some interest in Apex thanks to their microtransaction and PR fumble on Reddit, which put a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. The new character, map, weapon, and game tweaks have me stoked to hop back in and forgive their past mistakes, if they've truly learned from them. Do you think people are too quick to forgive mistakes or bad choices that company make, companies make? Or do we maybe need to take a step back sometimes and realize that some things are not that big of a deal or remember that humans behind there are humans behind these mistakes? I realize it's more of a case-by-case uh, answer, but maybe some examples stick out. I think... I don't know. If you feel however you want to feel about a game or a developer or whatever you need to feel. Yeah. But I if you if you want to forgive something then forgive it. If you don't, if it like does bother you the way something works. Like there are games that I'm probably not going to play a sequel cuz I didn't like the first one. That doesn't mean I'm holding it against them. It means I just don't care or don't have any interest in it because I have a previous experience that did, like colors my next one. Sure. So on in this sense for like a we're we're coming to this in a very new perspective because games as a service is still a very new thing. Yeah. But if he, if you think they are going to make the microtransaction mistake again, then don't get into it. But if it's just they made it once and thus you don't like them now, like I think that's still fine, but that's understand it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's not super fair, but again, you feel how you want to feel. Of course, we can't tell you that. Yeah, it just do what you like. I I think it behooves you if you're so interested in the game to give them chances if they want or you think they deserve them. For me, it falls into the latter, at least with Apex Legends mm-hmm. in this very specific answer because I don't want this applied to, well, this studio killed a bunch of dogs and you're still <laughs> playing their game. No, no. It falls into the latter on this one, right? Do we maybe need to take a step back sometimes and realize that things are not that big of a deal? That's probably the ding, ding, ding answer in terms mm-hmm. of how we all get ratcheted up on the internet every day about something new. Yeah. Like, there's plenty of real atrocities and things that need to change and like real issues we deal with but yeah when like and again i know i'm out on the the ledge here because i don't play apex i'm not super familiar with it originally i remember when this story happened it was that weird thing they'd put out where it was like the uh, they basically went ham on loot boxes yeah but it was it was but then it was like it would be 150 dollars to buy everything from this thing right and then they put out a statement being like hey like we hear you, sorry, it won't be like that. And I was like, see, everything's okay. And everybody wrote in like, no, there's these other fucking loot boxes that you're not talking about. I'm like, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> sorry, you know what I mean? Like, it is this thing of, I think, you know, going back to it, that, and I've said this a lot, and I know it doesn't get me any uh, fans usually, but there are humans behind these mistakes. Yeah. And I, I, even though it's easy to look at people and be like, they're just out here to gouge us. I think a lot of times they're not. And like, it's Rod Ferguson talk, oh, talked about Gears yesterday, right? Of like, 
hey, we're learning as we go. We're mm-hmm. doing all this. We, we understand right now you're not happy with the microtransactions. We're going to adjust. We're going to change. We're figuring this all out for the first time. Yeah. It's very easy, especially in this internet age, as people who are more or less raised on the internet, yeah. it's easy to think of every name or th- whatever you see as an abstraction of like, I know them based, I'm, I'm sure I know them because I've seen their name a lot. And or they are doing a thing that I am familiar with, like Apex Legends, and it's easy to go like, oh well, these people must be bad because they're doing a thing I don't like. Yeah, and like that doesn't necessarily apply here, but because there is that kind of cuts both ways with the way the reaction to those loot boxes went, and the developers went on Reddit and like, of course, yeah, yeah. they went on Reddit and were like, fuck you guys, like I can understand people, story. Ha- I can understand mm-hmm. people having sour taste in their mouth about yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I also don't entirely think they're wrong about some of that stuff either. Sure. Of like the kind of threats you get like i remember uh it was a call of duty guy who was in charge of multiplayer or something like that he was like he was on the team for it and he would just post his death threats that he would get because he would like nerf a shotgun and people would be incredibly angry about it so like i said it cuts both ways in a lot of ways yeah but again the idea of maybe things just aren't a big deal that is probably the takeaway you need to come with it there there are lines in the sand like there is a I don't want to get too far into it without knowing the name of the developer or the game, but there is a thing now about a developer, an indie developer who's like very, what's the word, gleefully transphobic. Mm. And the like people are posting like logs and Twitter t- or tweets that are yeah, kind of like. Yeah, something developed today. A friend just sent me of the, the whole sale thing. Did you see that? Yeah. It yeah. was like 41, per- which is, it's hard to get like the actual like fact out of that. Yeah. Because are they trying to make fun of trans suicide rates or are they just making a 41% off sale? Like, 41% is weird, it's very specific. weirdly specific to me yeah. that I, I think they're trying to make fun of that in a weird, very gross way. So yeah, yeah that sucks. And like that is a line in the sand where I'd be like, no, I'm not going to support anything these guys do. Yeah. But on the other hand, like maybe that line in the sand for you is loot boxes. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. it's a personal decision, right? And how you go and, you know, free society and such. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one other question I had here Nanobiologist says that his girlfriend says that you have to say something to him, Imran? Yeah, Nanobiologist play Slender. I think it was Slender or Slenderman, Slenderman. Slenderman. Where does this come from? The subreddit. Oh, okay. She posted a thing on the subreddit saying, can you guys get nanobiologists to play Slenderman with me? Gotcha. And okay. I was like, remind me on Tuesday. And you've been reminded. Yeah, I've been reminded. Play, have to play the now. game. Uh, it's time to squad up where you can play games with people, maybe even nanobiologist or his girlfriend or Imran or Parrot. <laughs> Not me. I ain't gonna play with you. Uh, Chris Waterman wrote into patreon.com slash games. He needs help on Twitch. Uh, Twitch name is Rental Rush. All one word. Hey, y'all. This weekend, I am partnering with the folks over in the Killer Queen Jacksonville community for an all-woman takeover of my Twitch channel for a breast cancer awareness charity stream. The stream will run all weekend starting Friday, October 4th at 8.30 p.m. and running through roughly 6 p.m. on Sunday, October 6th. We will be taking breaks for sleep for full transparency. All proceeds go directly to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. This is a very important cause as I have many close friends and family members that have been affected by this terrible disease. It would mean the world to me if some of the best friends would stop by, hang in the chat, donate a buck or two, and help us kick cancer's ass. If you want to watch, you can go to twitch.tv slash rental rush. Uh, thanks for all you do, Kind of Funny team. You all are amazing. Have you no, played you're a amazing. Killer Queen Black? I've played at events. I haven't played the... They have, uh, it at, they have a machine at... There's like a new barcade by, you know, where the Microsoft Loft is. Hmm? Yeah, there's a new barcade over there, and I noticed they have that game there. So good. Yeah. God, I love Killer Queen. I'm excited for it to come to Switch, Xbox, etc. But mainly yeah. for Switch, so we can just play it everywhere. <laughs> All right, it's time for You're Wrong. This is where people write into Patreon.com. Sl- or no, that's not right. Kindoffunny.com slash You're Wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screwed up. Virtual Boy says, the question of why Gearbox is not fully unionized came up. According to them, Texas law prevents them as it is a, quote, right-to-work state, which means they can't deny anyone employment based on membership or non-membership of a labor union organization. Uh, there's a link to a VG247 article explaining. Uh, Ilgrill Chill says Amazon Prime announced their monthly free games are available now for PC. It's uh, Telltale's The Walking Dead Michonne, Deadlight Director's Cut, Adam Wolf, Serial Cleaner, and Stranger Things 3, the game. Nanobiologist says we miss new uh, deals, uh, games coming to Game Pass. Uh, Dishonor 2 comes October 3rd. World War Z and Ukulele come October 10th. Fallout New Vegas, Felix the uh, Reaper, uh, Panzer, Dragon, Orta come October 17th. Do you ever, is there a word for that feeling of like when you bought a game full price and then like at some point it's just free and you still haven't played it? 
Just regret. Yeah. For me, that's a Sonner 2. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I really want to play that game. And I remember buying it full price with like FF15 at the same, like, I think the same day I bought those games. It's and I great. just never touched it. It's great. One of yeah. the greatest games this generation. I will probably play it sometime soon. Now that it's on yeah. Game Pass, I don't have to install it anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zaire points out Game Informer just revealed their next cover, which is Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah. That was my last hope for any Batman news soon, and it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, there is no Bat. Uh, the Granite Pokemon was the last thing I knew about. Okay. But, yeah. Uh, Game Awards, I guess, Barrett? They're, they're that tease t- was way too fucking soon for Game Awards. It's bullshit. It is, it is bullshit. He's right. That was, I agree. That was no, really I, dumb marketing. It's bad. It was bad. It was a bad. It's it was a, bad a weird call. thing. Well, you know, why don't we capitalize? It's, uh, it's weird. Yeah. I guess they had to do it for Batman Day, but like. But they didn't even do it on Batman Day. It's yeah. the day after. It's lame. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> that's been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Uh, tomorrow I'll be hosting with Odell Harmon Jr. returning to the show. Thursday, Imran's back with me. Then he's sticking around to do the games cast with me, which you can watch. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Me, Tim, Imran, and Fran. And then Friday, it's Imran and Twi- Tim. I said Twim. Twim. But I meant Tim. You I called I mean? him Greg when I walked in earlier. Well, we look exactly the same. Yeah, now. I know. Like in Hopefully fairness, the suit now. Yeah, in fairness, if someone called me, I'd be like, there's no difference. Well, it's like even now, if he was here right now, right, it would just be this weird palette swap to you. <laughs> well, they can't create a character. They're just like different skin color. Done. <laughs> there you go. You know, Barry, never get glasses like us, okay? We can't have it all look like this. We need to get Winter to, Winter to grow a beard and Fran to get glasses. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. We're sorry we all kind of look alike. <laughs> uh, please be part of the show. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, you know the rest. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. Receipts.com. Podcast services around the globe. Watch live on Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. And until next time, no. It's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>